Hi, I'm Dr. Tunku Atika. I'm a medical doctor and a lactation counsellor. I'm also the founder and managing director of my company, Bonda Heaven. We're a women's wellness centre specialising in pre- and postnatal services. We're based in Banda Putri Bangi. Actually, breastfeeding was the core of the reason why Bonda Heaven was founded. I have two children. It started when I realised how different it was breastfeeding my first child and breastfeeding my second child. They were two completely different experiences. When I had my first baby, I was a houseman, I was a doctor at the pediatrics ward, no less, um, asking mothers every single day how their breastfeeding was going and talking to breastfeeding mothers every day, not realising actually that um, I don't have the depth of the knowledge about breastfeeding at all. Um, until the day where I gave birth <laughs> and the nurse is like, ah, oh, come on doctor, you're a doctor, right? So you know how to breastfeed. And then I realised that I don't know how to do it. It's not as easy and as natural that I thought it was going to be at all. <laughs> and the experience in general for my first son was just really, really difficult. It was challenging. It took a toll on my mental health as well. I just didn't realise how this was not taught in medical school in detail at all and did not realise how I actually don't know how to do it at all. And I only managed to breastfeed him for about six months and I was mix feeding, meaning I was formula feeding, mixing it with breastfeeding. But then afterwards, I learned to be a lactation counsellor. I took a course, I became a full-fledged lactation counsellor and then I was more prepared by the time I was pregnant with my second baby. And then giving birth to my second child, a daughter, I realised that, oh my god, it's just so much easier when you know what to do. And I just wished that no mother should ever go through the challenging confinement period that I went through with my first baby, that I want to help all mothers to have, to have this easier, happier journey breastfeeding their baby and just generally a much, much better experience during their confinement period, you know. So then I wanted to uh, be the doctor who actually knows about breastfeeding. So this was why I founded Wonder Heaven. This is when customers would tell us, you know, their pain is better after they come see us and that we made their week so much better after just two hours of me time with us. And I'm very proud of the fact that we're advocates of women's happiness, or specifically mothers. Because you know, mothers, um, women especially mothers, they tend to let go when they have, of themselves, when they have all these other responsibilities. Modern mothers, they tend to focus on their career, their marriage, their children, their household and themselves always come last. And you know, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So we always tell women to, you know, fill your cup, come to Bonda Heaven, fill your cup, it will last you a long time. Last you a month, say in Kamanti. I really want to see us reaching more mothers. Right now we're only in one place, which is in Banda Putri Bangi. We really want to um, look for partners and investors to uh, be able to reach mothers from who lives further from Bangi. Because right now we are receiving customers from Shah Alam, Rawang, Bukit Jalil. These are all far, far places for mothers to come and it's quite inconvenient for them. So in three years time, I'd like to see us have at least five branches so that we can reach more mothers and it's not inconvenient for them to come to us, you know. While we also do mobile um, services, I don't want to promote mobile services. I want people to come to us just because mothers are much calmer when they are in their own space and not at home. When they're at home, they have like a million things on their head, you know, I need to do my laundry, oh my god, <laughs> I need to do this, I need to do that, when they're at home, because they're just still in their working space, um, so to speak. So we need to take them out of their house so they can have a bit of a mental break from the family and their children, you know. Not to say that they, <laughs> not to say that mothers don't like their children, but you know, everything we need to take time off too, okay? 
Breastfeeding has so many benefits, you know, especially for babies. Um, it's very, very customized, you know. You know when we give formula, it's always in three years. One formula is for one to three years, and then the next formula is for four, five, six years. It's like that. So it's not. It's made for everybody within a three-year range. But breast milk is so so customized for your baby's current age. Not e not even just your current age. It's the current weather, the current infection running through your house. Um, when the weather is hotter your breast milk will be more dilute because you have more water because your baby will be more dehydrated. You know, in Western countries, they did a research, um, in winter, the milk is actually warmer coming out of the mother's body so that it can warm the baby's body up. And this is um, not accounting for more important things like um, they will provide antibody building blocks for the current infection that's running in the household for the baby and not just any you know, not just any <laughs> antibody building blocks, it's specifically for the ones that's currently in your household. So it's just very, very special in that sense. And, you know, even morning milk and night milk is different because the night milk will have sleep hormones to help your baby sleep better. It's just irreplaceable, you know. And for the mothers, of course, um, there are health benefits as well where you are less likely to get osteoporosis less likely to get the female cancers. Breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancers are all reduced with prolonged breastfeeding. And also it um, reduces um, the chance of postpartum hemorrhage. Because you know when you actually breastfeed, your, uh, the, the breastfeeding will trigger release of a hormone that will lead to your uterine after labor to shrink back into its original size and stop bleeding from continuing. It's very, very important actually. It's just that breast milk is just so different and special and irreplaceable in that sense. In Bonda Heaven, we have treatments for all women actually. So we have um, our menu consists of women's wellness, so that's for everybody, you know, from an elderly woman to bride, bridal services as well. But we also have prenatal treatments where we have um, prenatal body ache relief, we call it. It's for pregnant women who suffers from back pain, hip pain, um, and there's no painkiller that they can take, right? So our physiotherapists will help to alleviate this pain for these women. And some of them experience frequent cramping as well. And being pregnant women, sometimes there are medications that are, there are a few medications that's actually safe for you, but a lot of women will choose not to take them, just, you know, ah, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put my baby in any sort of harm. And we tend to just hold the pain. <laughs> But it gets to a point where these women are really suffering through their pregnancy and this is, um, this is one of our core services, you know, making sure that women can have better, more positive pregnancy journeys and these women really become our loyal customers because we really help them at a time when they needed us the most um, because there is no other place that they can turn to when they have all this pain and the pain is just so real and it affects their daily lives, you know. Um, apart from that, we, after delivery, we also have confinement services um, that promotes breastfeeding. It's very, very important because even though you're an experienced parent, this might still be the first time you're trying to breastfeed your baby, right? Um, so we um, specialize in breastfeeding-friendly confinement services where our therapists will always um, prioritize. We think it's very important that we have this service and provide this service to mothers out there. Um, afterwards, we also have um, milk booster treatments and block duct treatments. These are to help with breastfeeding issues as they come, especially in the first few months after labour. And after that, um, for you know mothers with older toddlers, we also have body ache reliefs for women and that's always useful because you're handling the household, handling your toddlers all the time and this is one of our most popular services as well. 
for me, it's being able to identify opportunities. Being able to do so even through hardship, you know, being able to see through the fog, see through your own tears, and knowing which opportunities are worth pursuing. Because being an entrepreneur, if you're in the game long enough, you'll be seeing a lot of opportunities. But you gotta know which ones are um, viable or which ones are suitable for you to pursue. Also, I think very, very important is having grit, that mental resilience to be able to keep going and to be able to pick yourself back up every single time you get knocked down because that's going to happen often. And, you know, being able to push yourself when no one else is there to do that for you um, because without that, you won't be able to last long and grit is the only way for you to be to, to stay around longer, not get defeated too fast, you know? You know that this old song, <laughs> not, not that old, maybe a bit old, it's Unwritten. Have you heard the song? Unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield. It goes, feel the rain on your skin, no one else can feel it for you, only you can let it in, you know? and live the word, live the life of words unspoken. The rest of it is still unwritten, something like that. So I love that song because whenever I'm feeling down, I always say, you know, my successes are not written yet. My successes are not here yet. I just got to keep going, keep doing. And the mantra that I always say to myself is, you know, okay, Atika, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I'm not sure if this is going to sound boring <laughs> but I really want to make one about modern working mums. About my clients basically. There are some very interesting people that walk through our door and I really want to shed a light on how these women struggle between managing their career, managing their family and the role of a husband. What the husband, how the husband affects these women. Um, and how they can help more, you know. I think um, being Asians, we try and live that modern life, but we have this Asian culture behind us that may seem to not sync with what we're trying to do. So I really, I really think people should understand modern moms and their struggles more. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my feminist documentary suggestion. <laughs> no, don't ask me that question. <laughs> I'm a dessert person. I don't know what dessert I don't like. I eat everything. I <laughs> There's a lot of savory things I don't like, but dessert, you know, anything goes. I like all of them. <laughs> my favorite at, um, actually are Kenny, anything from Kenny Hills. Oh my God, they make divine things. are licensed as a spa so our industry is badly affected because last year in 2020 we had to close three months and this year we have to close a little bit more than two months so that's almost half a year of closure within between the two years you know almost six months of closure so of course it affected us a lot it really basically drained our cash reserves. I, I was saying to people, you know, when we were waiting for the announcements, I was saying, if we are extending this lockdown even just one more month, we're gonna close for good. I'm not gonna be able to stand another month because it's been almost six months of closure. I have no reserve left. But thankfully, that month we are able to open and we came back with such a strong force because our all our customer base was so supportive and they all came in droves and promoted us to all their friends we were really really thankful for them of course the pandemic hit us really really badly but um, during the pandemic actually <laughs> during the first mco last year i was actually in my hometown when the lockdown happened so that was very very challenging because i had to I was stuck elsewhere from where my team and my centre was. I actually had to remotely manage them and what we did was we sold anything that can be sold at that time. We sold 
thermometers, we were sourcing gloves, we were sourcing and selling masks, sanitizers, just anything basically. And my team helped me to, um, we did a cool <laughs> live on Facebook where they were showing all the products that we have on our shelves and we basically cleared out everything that we have on our shelves and we um, created anything that we could with whatever that we already had at the spa and sold it to all our followers and they were very very supportive by the time we opened we had used all the money that we <laughs> that we got from the sales to for our overhead right so when we reopened our shelves were practically empty <laughs> we didn't have any money to restock all those products but um, we got we got a lot better already um, even after only a month plus of reopening so we were very very thankful um, for that for our customers I think um, we're considering to not register our subsequent branches as a spa. We're considering to go more on a health and wellness focus so that if and when this happens again, we're not one of the last industries to reopen anymore. We want to be part of the core um, industries that can open despite a pandemic. You know, during the pandemic, what we did was we focused more on our mobile services but we didn't take just any clients who wants a relaxing massage or some pampering package we didn't do that we took clients who are actually in pain and needed us to help them and I made sure that my therapists only take two clients one in the morning and one in the evening so that they can go home shower and change in between the clients because safety is our biggest priority at Bonda Heaven not just for our clients but also for my girls at Bonda Heaven for my therapists you know we did this and um, thankfully it managed to pull us through the pandemic I don't think there's a lot of unique or different challenges for women who want to become entrepreneurs other than you know the regular challenges of becoming entrepreneurs but there's one thing that stands out a lot of women become entrepreneurs because they want to have that flexibility which means they are balancing something else along with their business a lot of times it's actually their family their kids their husbands so they have this balancing act to do and a lot of women because we're better multitasking. We're better at multitasking than men, right? No offense. <laughs> but we sometimes it's to um, a disadvantage for us because a lot of women want to do everything because they think they can. And sometimes they do can um, do a lot of things at once. But if she lets that continue going on and on, she will be burnt out. And there are a lot of women in business that I see is just going through the motion and just going through her days, not really thinking about things because she just has no mental capacity to think of anything else apart from the things that she already has on her plate. And she definitely does not have time to think about herself. So I think finding the balance is the difficult um, challenge for women in business because they have to know in the end what are their goals and what are their opportunities and what are their priorities that they want to focus on so that they don't just end up going through the motion and one day regretting what they might have missed out on. I think the best thing is do your best and not look at other people for comparison. Everybody has their own journey. Everybody hides their own challenges. You know, when you see on social media, this is a very social media age, right? When you're young, you're very into your Instagram, your TikTok, your Twitter, but you know, nobody posts, rarely people would post their challenges in their business because they need to portray, they need to have this facade that they're successful, right? So you only see the good things. You don't see the rough times. So when you go through these rough, rough times, don't think that you're the only one going through that. You gotta find a partner or partners to do it together with you. Don't do it alone. 
because when you're just starting out, you cannot do everything yourself. And the talents that you do, that you can afford, are usually not up to um, the task that you need them to do because they need to be multitaskers, they need to see the big picture, they need to do all the sacrifices and you cannot expect them from a salaried employee, right? So you got to find partners who really have the same vision, the same focus, the same passion as you and do it together. It's just much, much better that way. And always remember that everybody doing business are ducks. Have you heard of that? They're all ducks. They're swimming gracefully on top of the lakes, but their feet are pedaling like crazy underwater. So just know that you're not alone.